Lessons in Cartoon Expressionism. Before I start drawing, I generally do a lot of uh, research. I like to get a lot of what's called source material. And, uh, and I'm always educating myself as I'm learning how to draw and hopefully become a better artist. Uh, this, this tutorial will go through history and science and a lot of other subjects, uh, mathematics and geometry, and, and all through drawings. Today's lesson, Druids. What's a Druid? Druids were priests or magicians believed to have existed more than 5,000 years ago in Gaul, England, and Ireland. The word Druid means those that live among oaks. Oaks and mistletoes were considered sacred and played a role in many Druid rituals. The Druid religion was nature-based, and its worship cycle was marked by the movements of the sun and the moon, and in particular, the growing seasons. The famous Roman leader, Julius Caesar, wrote about the Druids in the first century BC, and it's said that he included a Druid in his personal council. The tradition of mistletoe during Christmas is said to have come from Druids. Mistletoe is a parasitic plant that grows on oak trees and was believed to be special for the Druids, so much so that they would cut it from the oak with a golden sickle. They were said to wear long white robes, have long beards, and wear oak leaves on their heads. It's time to draw! Pencil zone! And I start with very basic geometric shapes. So this will be the face, roughly. This is going to be sort of his head up here. See how long his beard's going to be. And the basic shapes that I like to play around with are circles, squares, and triangles. So you can identify that here. Uh, I'm going to put a bunch of these little circles here that eventually will become oak leaves that will be around the druid's head. Druids apparently wore robes, so we're going to draw this body, but uh, really it's just one big rectangle. His arm with a sleeve comes down this way and really is almost like a triangle that's kind of bent. And we'll do the same for his other, but it kind of it overlaps, so we're going to have two triangles there. And for the hands, we're basically going to create two ovals. This hand's going to be open. I'm going to save that till the end, and then this hand's going to be closed, so it's going to be more circular. And you can see how the, the shape starts to form, and the reason we do this is so that when we start drawing with the black that we're not sort of staring at empty space, that we actually have sort of uh, an idea of where we want to go. Here's going to be the sickle that they would have in their hand to perform a lot of their ceremonies, like the cutting of the mistletoe, which was very sacred. And you can see how there's a loose idea of what we're working with there. And a lot of drawing is erasing, so I'm never really scared to erase. I think that's an important part of it. So there we have it, roughly. And then I'm gonna take my marker and start to draw the definition. So here we got the ear, the nose, the eye, and then got the beard coming down here, which is a key element, to really giving it that proper druid look. There, and then we have the mouth coming through. And let's not forget about these oak leaves. So I'd already looked up the shape of the oak leaves and they're roughly this shape, but the circles that I drew in prior kind of give me the outline so I can pretty much freestyle that part of it and have a little bit of his head peeking over the top. And I'm gonna use a technique called hatching to kind of make these leaves pop out a little bit by making them darker. So even if you can't tell that they're necessarily oak leaves, you can see that he's wearing something on his head. And then we start here on the, the robe part of it. And part of the reason that the drawing allows me, the underdrawing with the pencil allows me to have more liberty once I start drawing with the ink is because the placement's already there. So I don't have to think necessarily where anything's gonna go. I can more have fun just adding the details and exploring along the way, which I encourage you to do as well. Put in the feet there, a little bit of hatching to give it that feeling of space. A little bit of texture here in the beard as well, and this could be anything. You could do little dots like that. 
You could do little X's as well. You could do little lines. It's really more about just exploring and trying different things. And we have the arm here, put the elbow, bring this draping around. And then where this cuts into each other, I'll just bring it down like that and then add more of this texture to give it the idea that it uh, has some sort of movement to it. Bring this hatching in to give it a certain feeling of space. And then what I like to do is look at my own hand. So he would be someone, something like that. I'm sure to do my own version of that. Bring the thumb here. And you can see how it all fits pretty nicely into that circular shape that I had drawn earlier. And then hatching there to give it the feeling that it's inside the hand. Bring it all the way down. And add these little lines there. And then kind of give this just the right amount of detail so it looks realistic, but it also looks like a cartoon as well. Part of the form of cartooning that I really like is that you can take a lot of liberties with it, but you're still able to convey a message uh, through the drawing. It's a very direct message. And then we'll bring this hand. And I deliberately chose uh, to leave this hand last. Hands are usually one of the harder parts to draw, but uh, once you really start to break it down into the simpler forms, you realize that it's just like anything else, that it's very doable. We're not really sure what was gonna be in this druid's hand, and because they were so important to the druids, I'm gonna do a little magical acorn there, sort of levitating above his, his hand as only a druid could do, with a little oak leaf, oak leaf there. And then these are the international levitation symbols here to show that it's actually hovering above his hand. Maybe even a couple of stars, because stars are very magical. And there you have it. And then I'll do a little bit of a shadow here to give it that feeling of depth. And then once this is done, I want to remove the pencil lines underneath. And then once we get rid of that, so now the next part is for you to draw your own druid. All right, so now that we understand druids a little better and hopefully you've practiced one on your own, I wanted to do a freestyle drawing of taking a druid and bringing it into an imaginary world. So again, I'm gonna start with my pencil drawing. I'm gonna put him somewhat in more in, in an action pose. So I'm gonna, again, keeping the shape pretty simple. I'm gonna kind of put him hunched over, uh, one arm kind of extended outwardly in a magical pose. So we do the arm outstretched. Gonna have him uh, battling a robot of some sort. So uh, right here, I'm gonna put the head of the robot. I'm gonna have more of a form-fitting suit on. Give him some classic uh, cartoon hands. I'm gonna come in with the, with the black and start adding my detail. Here. It's got an old radio, an old boom box for a head. The speakers create the eyes. So this is something I'm really just making up as I go along. Kind of giving him a, a little bit of an insect quality. And even though I've kind of created a, a little bit of a robe looking shape here, I'm going to change my mind and decide to give him more pants. Give him more of a modern look. Give him some muscles there as well. Burly forearms. And then lots of magical energy shapes around both of them to kind of denote that there's some sort of action taking place. And really, instead of battling each other, it looks like they're exchanging magical information somehow, which is usually good, I think. I think it's a good idea to do that anytime you can. To note a little bit of a background here, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mountain landscape. Give the mountains a little bit of a personality, so we'll give each one little eyes, so they're kind of the, the audience that's watching this whole ordeal take place. And really I find just adding eyeballs to anything gives it a certain sense of bringing it to life, so I encourage you to do that as well. Erase all our pencil lines. And there you have it. Now go off and do it on your own and let's see what you come up with. Now it's your turn! Thank you for watching this tutorial. I look forward to presenting more in the future and hearing back from you and let me know what you think. For future episodes, please subscribe to this channel or sign up for our newsletter at LeboArt.com.
Check the description below on where to post your drawing and see other people's drawings as well.